David Williams with Jesus Ministries here, and I've got good news for all of you who are in Christ Jesus, that you are dead, but alive. You are dead to the law. The law, the word of God revealed through Moses that revealed that if you break God's commands, you die. That was fulfilled. That was completed in Christ. That was accomplished in Christ because he died. So because Jesus died, and why did Jesus die? Because men broke God's law and needed to die for it. So Jesus died in our place, and now we are, we've fulfilled God's requirement by accepting Jesus because Jesus died and rose from the dead, and now he lives not under the law. See, Jesus is in heaven, and the law of Moses was given to men on the earth to fulfill the will of God on earth and Jesus died rose from the dead and he has the new body and he lives with the Father in heaven and he obeys the Father's every will every desire and we through Christ Jesus we obey the Father by the leadership of the Holy Spirit and by the words that Jesus spoke and so Jesus, though he was under the law, he taught what he would want us to do once we were free from the law through death. Nobody in the cemetery sins. All the people in the cemetery, they died and can no longer do wrong. So you, through Christ, you cannot do wrong as long as you follow him. As long as you follow him, you cannot do wrong. When you do wrong, you are breaking the law which condemned you to death. Your only solution is to repent to Jesus and have Jesus forgive you, making you no longer condemned to death under the law. And your ability to serve God now comes by the Holy Spirit in you revealing to you God's expectations from the scriptures and by his spirit so you and so you can obey God freely without the information given to you through the law of Moses so nothing in the law of Moses has to guide you the things because that's the old command there are new commands of the father that Jesus wants us to keep so Jesus wants us to keep his commands because we're alive in him. We are dead under the law of Moses, so we don't keep the law of Moses because we're dead. Nobody in the cemetery keeps the law of Moses because they're dead. Nobody in the cemetery sins because they're dead. So why don't I have to keep the Sabbath? Because I obey Jesus, and if Jesus wants me to work on Saturday, then I can work freely on Saturday and not be under the authority of the law. Do I have to rest unto God? I have to rest unto God. The Lord doesn't want me running myself ragged when he wants me available to serve him. So I have to rest. It may not be Saturday. It may be on another day. But I, but since I am in Christ, that's, that's not the authority that says this day rest. I'm not under that because I'm dead. I broke it. And so it, it sentenced me to death. Jesus died in my place. I get baptized into Jesus. And th that means I too die. I've died. And so I am dead to the law. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter 219 and it says this in Romans I believe chapter 7. I am dead to the law. The law is holy and good and just and it commanded my death and so I come to Jesus, I accept him and I get baptized and by doing so I am now dead and the law is no longer my authority. The Old Testament is no longer my authority. Uh, my authority now is Christ Jesus and the new commands he gave me and the new spirit he gave me and the new life he gave me because Jesus died once and well let's read Romans chapter 6. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Should we keep sinning because God has given us grace now and not law? Verse 2, God forbid, God forbid that I should keep doing wrong. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So I, if, if I say, well, I'm, I'm free from the law, now I can go and murder. Well, if I go and murder, see, I break the law and I'm condemned to death. But if Jesus doesn't lead me to murder, and we know Jesus told me not to murder, then I, all I have to do is obey Jesus and the authority of the law. I'm not under that. I'm dead to murder. I'm dead to fornication. I'm dead to sexual perversion. What if I do those things? Quickly repent and the Holy Spirit will give you power not to walk in those sins unto death. There are sins unto death and there are sins that are not unto death. If you commit a sin unto death, you've broken also the law because the law reveals the sins that are worthy of death. And if you break one law, you break them all. You break the whole commandment. And so the old command condemns you to death. You accept Jesus and get baptized. In doing so, you die. Once you're dead, you can't keep the law nor can you break it because you're dead. You are, you're dead. Your body is dead to the law. Verse 3, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh, so we, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is, present tense, crucified with him, that the body of sin, the desire to fornicate, the desire to steal, the desire to kill, that's dead, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, or from that point, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. I'm free from sin from sin right now. It goes on and says in verse 8, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. So even if I break the law by sinning, I can come to Christ and repent and he can give me power not to do that anymore and I'm no longer sentenced to death. So the fact that I am already dead to Christ, the law no longer applies to me. The Old Testament no longer applies to me. Why not? Because if you break it, you die. But I'm already dead. So I've already fulfilled it. I'm already dead. So how can breaking the Sabbath negatively affect me? Because I'm already dead. You break the Sabbath, you die. Well, I'm already dead. So now, now what, what must I do? Now I must obey the rest of Jesus. Jesus must now guide me and tell me when to rest. Jesus must now guide me and tell me when to go to church. Jesus must now guide me and tell me when to, when to spend time with the family. He must now guide me. And he's given us specific expectations in his command. So Jesus gives us new commands. He gives us a new testament. And the Holy Spirit guides us to obey it. If we cannot obey it, and if we will not obey it, we are under the law, and the law condemns to death, and when we die, we will die in sin. But through Jesus Christ, if we die with him, we are no longer under the law, we are now under the power of God, the power of Jesus, the grace of Christ, and when we obey Jesus, and if that means whatever Jesus tells you to do, if we obey Jesus, we are no longer under the law, because we're dead to it, Dead people cannot keep or break the law. They're dead, inanimate, can't move. We are now alive in Jesus Christ, and we can live in him. Verse 10, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. You died, un you already died, you already paid the price for your sins, and so the law can no longer condemn you because you're already paid for your sin. For And it keeps going, and it says, Verse 10, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, verse 11, likewise, consider you, your, you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. I'm dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Don't let sin from this point reign in your physical body, your mortal body, that you should obey it in the desires of it. So your body still has desires because the process of death is still undergoing. But you are officially considered dead in the eyes of God, in your flesh. 
I'm dead. And so he no longer holds me accountable to the law of Moses because all it did was show me what God's will was and told me the consequence for it. And I broke God's will and the consequence was then enacted through Jesus. It was, it was established through Jesus. And so we've got to understand this. I'll keep reading a little bit more. Verse 13, neither yield you your members, your body parts, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves, surrender yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead were resurrected. Not like Lazarus, but like Jesus. When Lazarus arose, he didn't have a brand new body. Jesus is the only one who has a brand new body. He's the only one who has his physical body in heaven, the brand new changed one. And that's how we are by the spirit. One day we will put off this physical body that still has the nature of sin in it. But this body is no longer the standard by which we live. We live by the leadership of the inner spirit of God who comes into us, renews our spirit, and now we are alive to obey him. Verse 14, for sin will not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law but under grace, meaning I'm under the divine power and providence of God. And Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 1, the law was not made for a righteous man. It was made for sinners. So if you still classify as a sinner, the law is for you. It's designed to show you your wrong so it can condemn you for your wrongdoing because you sin against God. So when you break, so when you sin a sin that is unto death, there are sins that are unto death, those that have broken the law, and there are sins that are not unto death. So the law condemns you, and if you are a murderer, if you are a fornicator, if you are a homosexual, if you are a thief, if you are a liar, you are condemned. But if you come to Jesus, he will forgive your sins, You'll, you will fulfill the cost of your sin through getting baptized into Christ, and when he resurrects, you are now under the new commands of God, not the old commands, but under the new commands, and now you can please God just because you obey Jesus specifically. Not the Old Testament, the New Testament, the new commands by the Spirit. So the Old Testament, it reveals the truth of God, but we don't keep it in its specifics. We now obey Jesus specifically, and we obey what the Spirit of God in us reveals that we should do. And we'll know we're pleasing God when we get the same results and the same promises, the same blessings. That is how you'll know that you are in Christ because Christ will be working righteousness in and through you. If you still want to do that stuff, that's the flesh talking. That is dead sin. Condemned. The law condemned that to death. You're no longer under the law. You're under grace. This is David Williams, and we'll talk again.